everyone? Dalton Hopkins with FrontStretch.com. I'm here with my cohort, co-worker, Phil Alloway, who's here with me at Watkins Glen International here. We just got done with what was a wild NASCAR Xfinity Series race. Ended up with Sam Mayer standing right where we are right now in Victory Lane just a couple hours ago. Phil, take me about that. Take me through that finish there. Sam Mayer wins. What did you see? What was your viewpoint? All right, man. Sam Mayer intentionally chose to line up behind Ty Gibbs for the final restart. He was a, he was a bit miffed after getting more or less nearly forced in an inside wall on the previous restart. His grandmaster plan was to try to push him up the track and potentially push him in Austin Hill. In reality, he ended up wheel hopping and taking out Ty Gibbs. And Cole Custer ended up running into the back of Hill and Hill spun out as well. Um, Sheldon Creed was able to get around him, take the lead briefly, but the track was a bit of a mess due to oil and kitty litter and all kinds of stuff out there. He nearly wiped out in the final turn coming to the white flag. Mayor got the lead and took his second triumph. Uh, yeah, if any, when you look back on this race, that's probably going to be the first thing that everybody remembers. The chaotic final restart and the final laps. I mean, Sam Mayer appears to be conciliatory. He didn't want to take him out, or at least he's saying he didn't want to. But that's what ultimately ended up happening, and that's what everyone's going to remember about this race. Yeah, I, I have to agree there. I think it kind of gave me, like, 2012 Marcus Ambrose, Brad Kozlowski vibes, especially with the oil on the racetrack, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just so, so chaotic in the end there. Everyone jostling for position, bumper to bumper, everyone hitting each other in the end there. But what... It, a lot of people are not going to remember are some of the unsung heroes that were there today. Some of the guys that were in the top five, some of the small teams that you don't really hear about very often. Guys like DGM Racing, Ross Chastain we all know about, but DGM Racing getting a fourth place finish. Sam Hunt Racing getting a fifth place finish with Connor Mosack. JDM, first time they've had two cars finish in the top 13 since 2020 So when they were still a four-car organization. So uh, a lot of kind of smaller teams getting some great finishes here today. And that we'll, we'll, we'll cover that on frontstretch.com. That'll be in, in our sidebar articles coming out later tonight. But let's talk about tomorrow. Today we had qualifying. We had Cup Series qualifying. And then we saw Denny Hamlin get his third road course poll of 2023, fourth total. Who do you like for tomorrow? Who looks fast to you? Oh, there are quite a few dudes that are pretty fast out there. There have been some surprises as well. Corey LaJoy starting in the top ten tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't expect that. Um, you could argue he kind of under uh, didn't quite go up to expectations because he was second overall in practice. I'm definitely looking at A.J. Allmendinger for tomorrow as somebody who could compete. He's going to be starting right up front. He was fastest overall in practice, and he doesn't seem to be feeling pressure. I talked with him this morning, and he seems to be about as normal as A.J. Allmendinger gets. He's still probably going to be hard on himself if something bad happens tomorrow. But he feels he seems to be about as ready as you can possibly be. If any, if anybody's going to crash the playoff parade tomorrow, it's going to be AJ. But there's going to be a number of guys that are going to be in tent, contention to win. Chase Elliott might not be one of those guys, though. Yeah, I have to agree there. I was going to lead into Chase Elliott, and I'm glad you did because, of course, that's where all the eyes are going to be tomorrow, right? Chase Elliott, two-time winner at this racetrack, and everyone kind of expects him to be, you know, the driver. This is he's not he can't really get in on points anymore. He's got to win a race, and this is probably his last best real chance to do that. Unfortunately, starting in 15th, and I looked this up earlier today, two drivers in all 39 races the Cup Series has had here at Watkins Glen. Only two drivers have won from outside of the top 14. So it's going to be very difficult for that number nine card to come out of his deficit. But not impossible. No, not impossible. Not impossible. He could do it. But i tell you who I'm looking at, realistically, who I want to put money on if I was a betting man. Mm -hmm. How about that guy who's in third tomorrow, coming fresh off a win at Indianapolis, Michael McDowell in that number 34 car. He looked fast last weekend, obviously, dominated the race, got that win, and then he looked fast today in qualifying. I'll tell you what, I, I really like Michael McDowell. I mean, he came, he came into the media center today, 
into the bullpen. We all talked to him, got to hear from him, and he is smiling, all smiles. He's so happy. He knows that he's got a legitimate chance of winning this car. And straight up, if you ask him, he'll say it. He's, he, he feels it like, yes, I can win this race tomorrow, and I, I believe him. I really do. Yeah, for someone like McDowell, it's, it's a new feeling to really have the ability to come to the track and say, hey, I got a chance to win this race. This is, this is a man who basically bit and scratched his way through a cup career for a decade. He, he had the S&P with teams like, um, oh, Jeepers, like Prism Motorsports, just to be able to stay on the grid. Mm -hmm. And to see how far he's come with Front Row Motorsports, which used to be literally the bottom of the, of the barrel, at one point, they turned the phones off at the team in 2008. To see them being a chance to legitimately win, no fluke, come out and kick everybody's butt cheeks, it's, it's really something to behold. <laughs> This could be this could be just a story, a collection of stories of small team success this week, and we'll have to see for tomorrow. But stay tuned to see if that comes true from Dalton Hawkins, Phil Alloway with FrontStretch.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more coverage tomorrow. We'll be right here at Watkins Glen International for the Gold Bowling at the Glen. Hey everyone, Dalton Hopkins here with FrontStretch.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out one of the two videos next to me to see more of our racing content.